Okay, let me catch my breath. My heart has been beating out of my chest and my anxiety is at an 11. These go to 11? Yeah, I'm good now. I think I may need to talk to my therapist. Here are my immediate thoughts on Civil War. Civil War is the new A24 dystopian war drama written and directed by Alex Garland, who is one of my favorite directors working today with films like Ex Machina, Annihilation, and even though it was super weird, I did appreciate the ambition of men. And of course, he wrote 28 Days and 28 Weeks Later. This war thriller follows a team of journalists who travel across the United States in a parallel dystopian future during a rapidly escalating Second American Civil War, which has engulfed the nation. First of all, let me just say, yeah, I get it. I know what is going on politically, and even though I live in Canada, I understand that this film can be politically charged. And I think one of the big questions people are going to ask going into this movie is what political stance this movie will take. And the answer is none. Civil War isn't interested in the events that started the war or the political leanings of its characters. But the film is about the effects of war and how it can desensitize people. But I want to talk about the performances first. In Civil War, there are four key figures that the film follows. First, there is Kirsten Dunst as Lee Smith, a Reuters photojournalist that has seemingly seen it all in her career. And while she is great and fearless at her job, snapping these action photos on the ground as the situation just gets dire and spirals, but she also plays it with a very cool and pragmatic approach and detachment that is needed because she sort of serves as the Virgil in this crazed version of Dante's Inferno. She is really great at evoking emotions where her eyes say one thing and her body language says something completely different. It is a great nuanced performance and I really enjoyed it. So if I see this as sort of a dystopian Dante's Inferno, Kaylee Spaney, who plays Jesse, an ambitious photojournalist herself, is the Dante of the story. She is eventually rescued by Lee and is reluctantly taken under her wing. And it is really through her eyes that we see the real brutalities of this civil war. And make no bones about it. There is some brutality and atrocities and just straight up war crimes being committed in this film. But I really like Spaney's performance. When she's first introduced in the film, she just looks way too young to be doing what she's doing. And the film even references that. But Civil War uses the backdrop of this war to show Jesse's evolution from this scared and naive yet ambitious individual to someone who eventually does become the personification of what war can do to one's psyche. Wagner Mora plays Joel, Lee's associate, and his goal along with Lee is to get to Washington DC so he can get an interview with the president. He is very laser focused on his goal and he experienced some major, major trauma in order to achieve it. There is one moment where Joel releases a floodgate of emotions and it feels really earned because throughout this movie, we've gotten a sense of Joel's sense of friendship and loyalty. And when that is threatened and oh God, that happens a lot in this movie, we feel it. Yeah, it was a great performance. I believe the heart of the movie belonged to Stephen McKinley Henderson, who plays Sammy, a New York Times journalist who was once Joel and Lee's mentor. And he's the one who has really seen the most as a journalist. He's really a veteran of this. And he evokes sort of a sense of this old school journalistic integrity when the news was really just about presenting the facts presenting them as is and letting the audience really just decide and decipher for themselves how to process that information given to them. 
He is also the one that seems to be the most aware of the dangers these photojournalists are placing themselves in. Also, there is one little thing that I want to mention. I'm going to admit, there was a little dash, little dash of the magical Negro in his performance. Now, not the kind from that goddamn turd of a movie that I just saw, but the actual one that's defined by Spike Lee. Didn't really hurt the movie for me, but... The other two performances that stand out, first was Nick Offerman as the unnamed president who is acting in his third term. He actually gives a speech at the beginning of the film and it is very chilling. He plays a very cold and chilling uh, president in this film. And he's holed up in the White House. And you know, we never really get a sense of his political motivations. The character of the president really serves more of a means to an end in this film. But I did like Nick Offerman here. The one who stole the show for me was an uncredited Jesse Plemons. And we've seen him all throughout the trailers for Civil War. And his character may clue us in on where battle lines may be drawn. But again, Civil War and Alex Garland is actually more interested in the effects of war and how it can shape one's morality or provide somewhat of a justifiable cover to perform some really heinous and atrocious acts. The scene with Plemons was the most tense. I was on the edge of a panic attack the entire time, but again, he just crushed it here and it's just another great performance in a long line of them for Jesse Plemons. Alex Garland keeps things moving really for the most part. These journalists are making a trek from New York to DC and each new stop on the way there, Garland adds a new wrinkle to escalate the tension. Now this is a, one of those films where this happens, that leads to this, that leads to this. Civil War is actually more episodic in nature and Garland is snapping a vignette of a specific time and place with specific people and it helps to keep the story tight and moving and for me I didn't feel a lull in the film and I was engaged the whole time with everyone. It is clear that Garland wears a lot of his cinematic influences on his sleeve, specifically Andrei Kartarkovsky and Elam Kilnov's 1985 war epic Come and See. There's a shot of a ditch of dead bodies and we see the struggle of one character climbing through them and it reminded me of the scene in Come and See where the two main characters, Flyora and Glasha, are struggling through this mud and they're just going through it and you're just going through the pain and struggle and it really encompasses the pain and frustrations, the struggle of war. So Alex Garland, I see you, I see you. As with all Alex Garland films, it just has a great look to it, courtesy of Rob Hardy's gorgeous cinematography. And Garland is a confident director, moving his camera around the protagonist when they're in tight situations, really getting into the action so we can get right in there and experience everything that the characters are experiencing. And the sound design for this movie, my God. I haven't felt gunshots that's rattled my chest like that in the theater since Michael Mann's Heat. And we get such a real world feel to what is happening. Whole cities and highways are just absolutely deserted. We are seeing situations where people need water rations. Things are just not great in this parallel version of the United States and Alex Garland and his team really hammer home the fact that regardless of nationality, War kind of sucks. Some of the battle scenes were really gripping and suspenseful and the film really gives you a sense that anyone can die at any time in this film. Garland really knows how to raise the stakes. And Garland isn't afraid to show the brutality of war and he presents violence in two really effective ways in my opinion mainly either in short bursts to shock and evoke feelings of an overarching dread or through the lenses through our photojournalists through still shot form. 
which gives the violence a deeper context as these images are kind of taken in a way to sort of detach the audience from what is happening. And I feel that is sort of Garland's thesis on this movie, which is how much violence can you take before you are truly emotionally removed from it? And that is a great question to pose in a film like this, because we live in a world where there is war and atrocities happening every day, but the earth still spins. And all we are worried about is that OJ Simpson just died and how WrestleMania 40 was one of the best WrestleManias of all time. So we already live in a world where maybe individually we may all be disgusted by the notion of war, but we all share sort of a collective detachment from it. So how much violence is too much violence? And what is it going to take for us to realize that war is a harrowing and terrible thing that we should be doing everything in our power to avoid at all costs? What are we going to do to prevent this? Do we have to wait until it is literally at our doorsteps before we realize that perhaps we are fostering a destabilizing and dehumanizing environment that could make this a reality? At one point, a man is set on fire and you have to ponder, how close are we to this actually happening? And Garland presents this in such a blunt, matter-of-fact nature that anyone that may be looking for a left versus right narrative may end up being frustrated. I do want to bring up the music by Ben Salisbury and Jeff Barrow whose score was very eclectic and there are some pieces that I thought were absolutely perfect. And there are one or two that sort of made me wonder, but that music truly helped to capture the dire situation we found our protagonists in. There is this overarching sense of dread in this entire film, and it is definitely making a statement about the importance of the free press, and it does make me respect these photojournalists and these journalists a lot more who are on the front lines trying to get the facts out to the general public. What I am interested in is the overall audience reaction if people are going to project their own political ideologies onto this film and search for political easter eggs that probably don't really exist except in their own minds but what i think alex garland did that was great was to use the backdrop of this civil war to tell a basic story about humanity there is no general making a rousing speech to troops. We don't get an explanation as to why Texas and California would align along with some of the other militia groups. But instead, we see how the horrors of war can affect interpersonal relationships and how those involved handle that trauma. Overall, I really loved Civil War. I believe Alice Garland taking an apolitical stance while focusing on the interpersonal journey of our main characters as opposed to trying to shoehorn an us versus them narrative was the right call and really gave us time to get to know these people and understand the sheer terror they see as this war breaks out. The film had a great pace and kept moving without sacrificing the quieter and personal moments needed to give us an emotional anchor. All the actors did a phenomenal job, the film looked and sounded great, and once more Alice Garland just shows he's a force to be reckoned with as a filmmaker who truly has a vision and ambition. This was A24's most expensive film, and you definitely see that money on the screen. See this in IMAX with the best sound possible. This is one of my favorites of the year. Civil War is a prestige movie for me. At least my blood pressure has lowered to an acceptable level. This movie was stressing me out something fierce. And let me say that it is great that I am in Canada but I am 15 minutes away from Detroit, so if anything happens there, most likely I'm fucked. Here's hoping that reason and logic and common sense dictates your election this year. <sighs> what did you think of Civil War? Share your thoughts, leave your comments, like the video, subscribe to the channel, 
And don't forget to hit that bell icon so you can get notifications as well. Thanks a lot, everyone. Take care.